Holy moly, what a beautiful day at the Horseshoe. Big Ten football is back in Ohio Stadium. The Buckeyes getting set to host Iowa in their Big Ten home opener. Want to know? Beat Michigan State on the road last week. These are the pregame keys, though, for Ohio State and Iowa. He's Jeremy Birmingham. I am Austin Ward. Welcome back to the podcast, and let's enjoy a perfect day for football. The crowd, the tailgates, the weather's complying. I don't know what more you can ask for, Berm. No, this is as good as it gets. First game here was really hot. Then we had kind of cold against Western Michigan for some reason, like 50 degrees. And then the week after for Marshall, it was like 95, 140 on the field. This is ideal for, yeah. for us weather fanatics. You don't get better. Uh, and yeah, the energy is good, man. Pulling into campus three and a half hours before a game, like it looks like people are going to be ready for this one. So now it's off to Ohio State to be ready. Both High Street and Owen Tangy River Road. Don't always see a bunch of traffic on both of those, but we, we tested it out and there are a lot of people coming down. So uh, if you're you're coming down into the horseshoe, I think you're getting the, your money's worth. And if you want to just come down and hang out, do so. There's still yeah. time. Uh, because the Varsity Club is right across the street. Yeah. I've heard it's a good place to spend a day. Yeah, it, it looks like it's going to be awesome for that. It should be a great day for uh, the Buckeyes as well, as they are, I don't know, between 17 and 20 point favorites is where the line appears what do you to be make that up? Uh, I, the, the line started at 23 and a half yeah. last Sunday, down to 17 uh, the morning of the game. What, what's your take? Well, I don't think it is because someone was expecting a major surprise for or injuries because uh, really Ohio State's availability report is clean again. Cardinal Tate is questionable. Uh, Ohio State's you know top three starting wide receiver there. You know usually questionable tends to be erring on the side of out. We'll see. Uh, Warmups are about to begin here shortly for the Buckeyes and we'll certainly be monitoring that uh, and provide any updates that we see on subtext. But it's not because of that. It's not there's a major starter that's definitively out or issues like that for Ohio State. So I think that there is a bit of reaction to what pace this game might be played at Burn that like there just might, might not be enough time for Ohio State to blow out Iowa because the, Iowa's going to run the football and they've got a really good defense that might be forcing Ohio State to run the ball or try some different things and it could be over quick. We'll see. I think that's my read on it. It's not that people are suddenly panicked over the Buckeyes because it didn't go to like down to 10 or 7. Yeah, and it's not like there's a bunch of bets on Iowa or anything like that. I think it's just you look at it, the over under on the game has dropped to 45 and a half from I think it was 53 and a half at the beginning of the week. So something is making people think that this game is going to be quick and on the ground. So I think it's kind of weird, all things considered, because these are for most in most ways the same two teams that played here two years ago in Ohio State won 54 to 10. Uh, in fact, Iowa's defense is probably worse now than it was then. Ohio State's offense as a whole might be better because you have the running game uh, of the threat of Quinshawn Judkins and Javion Henderson right. and Will Howard in the running game. So that, I don't know, it's, it's kind of weird, but you know, if Ohio State handles their business, and I think it starts up front, which is the return of Tyreek Williams. I mentioned this on the weekend kickoff show, the Bryant Heating and Cooling Systems weekend kickoff show, but like to me, the first key is just tackling. You can't let Caleb Johnson, Iowa's big time running back, turn three yard gains into six yard gains or six yard gains into 12 yard gains. This is about hitting a guy and getting him to the ground. So a huge day for Tyler Williams to return, but it's really about the linebacker play. And Sonny Styles, Cody Simon, Arbel Reese, those guys need to be able to make plays at the point of attack. And if the Buckeyes do that, I don't think this game's even close. Yeah, I, I wonder, not just, I, I expect Tyreek Williams to be making an impact and, and racking up tackles and tackles for loss himself. But I wonder if just the return of him and allowing uh, Tyreek Williams and Ty Hamill to play off of each other and control the gaps, what that means for the linebackers. If that if that clears up the picture for them, if that allows them to be more aggressive, get downhill, make the knockback tackles that Jim Knowles was talking about on Tuesday. I, 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 I think that Tyreek Williams has proven himself without playing in the last couple weeks just to be a rock solid foundational piece that the Buckeyes have to have. Uh, they didn't need him to control the line of scrimmage against Michigan State and they got more aggressive and they really settled in. I think that was maybe the best once you got to the middle point of the second quarter, the best that the defensive line has played in uh, this recent stretch. Certainly it was good without it, but now you added this piece in. I think that helps the linebackers more than it might help the rushmen themselves. Yeah, and that's kind of the question we've been asking for the last week, almost two weeks now. Like, how much does the, the defensive struggles we've seen up front from Ohio State, how much is that is related to Tyler Williams being gone? And how much of that is related to something else systematically that is maybe being exposed? And I, we're going to find out early in this game, I think, uh, which one of those things is true. So 
But either way, I think we'll see an improved defensive front from Ohio State just by Tyler being back. Yeah, and I think it, it plays into something else that you mentioned throughout the week, Burn. Like this, I think, is I'm not going to get hyperbolic and say it's make or break. It's definitive. Like this is the turning point in his career. I think this is a really critical game for Sonny Styles in his development at linebacker. Ohio State has not backed away from letting him work through some of the growing pains, which I think he clearly is having in my estimation. And I think that Jim Knowles and James Laurinaitis would say the same thing. They're not expecting a finished product from him immediately. Maybe they thought he would be slightly ahead of where he's played in the last couple weeks, but they're letting him work through it. He played more snaps than anybody else at linebacker. They didn't yank him out. We've seen Ohio State be willing to do that. Uh, in week one, they moved C.J. Hicks out of the lineup and put Arvell Reese in. They're they're not opposed yeah. to making some of these difficult personnel decisions. They're not doing that with Sonny Styles. But the things that Iowa wants to do in terms of running the football with Caleb Johnson and relying on their offensive line and then trying to get some shots to the tight ends, that's going to put Sonny Styles in the crosshairs for what Iowa wants to do. I think he's going to have to be the key. Uh, Tyreek Williams is going to play well. The guy that's got to really going to determine things for the silver bullets as a whole, I think, is Sonny Styles. You don't move him down to linebacker for for any reason other than these games. You have a six foot four, two hundred and forty five pound linebacker who runs a four five. You do it for this game. This isn't a game where I was going to try to do anything fancy. This isn't a game where they're going to try to do a lot of confusion or misdirection. This is we're going to line it up and run it down your throat, and we're going to throw to those tight ends. So if you can't cover those tight ends, that's how Iowa moves the ball. That's how I was going to control the clock. That's how the game gets to a an uncomfortable third and fourth quarter situation. So Sonny Styles is is the key of this game, without question. Offensively, I think, you know, you have Emeka Buka and Jeremiah Smith, so you could weather the storm of if Carnell Tate doesn't play. Again, we'll, we'll keep an eye on that in the build-up to 3.30 on CBS, but somebody else is going to have to fill that void if he's out, and that's where Brandon Ennis comes in, and he could be a major factor. Carnell Tate was... Early in that game a week ago against Michigan State, when the Spartans are trying to figure something out, maybe they want to shade some coverage that the way to direct Jeremiah Smith, and they don't want to get beat deep. Ohio State and Will Howard took advantage of that, and they targeted Cardinal State early on. Is this a situation where Emeka Ibuka slides outside and plays more in this game, and Brandon Ennis goes to the slot? How, will, how would Ohio State account for that? I feel one way or another, this is the game that would elevate Brandon Ennis, and I think there could be opportunities for him to make make a mark, make an impact early on. This is the type of game where what Carnell Tate does really well, which is block on the perimeter, keep keep the edges clean for the running backs, is important. So whoever is the next best guy at doing that, if it's moving Emeka out, if it's adding Brandon Innes out there, if it's Jaden Ballard, if it's Bryson Rogers, whoever it is, someone else is going to have to pick up and, and take the slack that Carnell, if he's not out there, provides. And that is like being a complete play after play wide receiver, not just the guy who's also a really uh, extensive threat with the ball in his hands, which Carnell is. So if he doesn't play, that's a big loss for Ohio State simply because it it eliminates one of the ways that Ohio State can free things up for the rest of the offense. But someone else is ready. I, I think Ennis is the guy, and you might be right that it means that Mecca moves outside because he's been so good at blocking. And Brandon is a very physical blocker in his own right on the inside to take over what Emeka has been doing. So it's a lot of it's a lot of interesting moving parts. But again, maybe not even necessary because when he gets out here in 30 minutes, we'll see if he's actually running around and looking right. Yeah, I guess my opinion on that, and we'll see what he looks like, how he's moving, and what the decision is right before game time. That's the questionable stuff. That's Ohio State will usually take that all the way up till kickoff. If they have to make a tough decision, if there's a decision in their mind at all. I honestly believe that as good as Iowa's defense is, this isn't a, the game where you would push it. Next week at this time, they're going to be on the road against Oregon. You're going to need to score 40 plus. And we've, well, maybe not. I mean, probably. We'll see. I mean, Oregon's looked a little. We can talk about Oregon when it's Oregon week. I, I shouldn't be skipping ahead. Your but point, the point is, is, you might be able to get through this close, one without it. You don't push the envelope. And I think Ohio State's been really good about that with what we talked to. Tyreek Williams could have played last week, didn't. Donovan Jackson could have played in week two, didn't. Cody Simon could have played in week one, didn't, because they are, they're building for the long haul here. And as good as I think Iowa is, as physical as this test is going to be, as uh, this is the biggest challenge of the season to date so far for Ohio State. All those things can be true, and it can be true that they wouldn't need to take any sort of gamble with yeah. Carnell Tate to win. You should be able to win this game without Carnell Tate if you're Ohio State. You have enough other pieces to do that. But the question is, who, fill, who steps up? And yep. is, is that guy who steps up going to step up and make plays, or is he going to be overwhelmed by what is going to be probably, I think, a really good crowd in here today? Yeah. Anything else on the keys for uh, It's just Will Howard, I think. I mean, we've seen him. 
be a little, I don't want to say rattled when he gets pressure. Iowa does not do a lot of blitzing. So this is about being patient and finding your guy and not making a decision like he made against Michigan State to throw into double coverage on the fourth down play that Emeka Abuka got, the or third down play that ended up in the interception. Like, I was not going to push the issue with him. They're going to drop back and make him make the right decisions. He's done a great job with that this season. Just do that. I We looked in... Iowa blitzed an abnormal amount two years ago. That was the way that they thought they could counteract C.J. Stroud and to try and press the issue. In every other game, it doesn't feel like Iowa and Phil Parker want to do that, but they feel like they have to against Ohio State. So Maybe they thought they had to against C.J. Stroud. Maybe, I, yeah. I don't know. If you let C.J. sit back and pick you apart with the receivers Ohio State has, but I think it's just so different now with the running game. Like you, you. That's why I think it's yeah. They have to add more bodies, I think, into the box. And like whether that means that they're heating up the blitz to try and get to Will Howard, which aside of one or two plays, his numbers against the blitz and against pressure are out of this world so far through the first four games. There have been a couple mistakes. C.J. Stroud made one against Iowa a couple years ago, uh, and you, the offensive line did too, put him in a spot that he shouldn't be in. Like that can't happen. Like I was good enough to make some of that happen. Are they good enough to make it last over four quarters? I doubt it. And if Iowa, uh, I don't know, gets them uncomfortable, I think that might be good. I guess Ohio State needs some of this, I think, too. This is October now. It's not going to be easy throughout the course of this next four-game stretch that we've talked about starting today. So, you know, starting fast, the cliches that we use every week, it's not about that. It is about the longevity and the effort over four quarters. And adversity can be a good thing. Like, in a long season with a game on the road at Oregon next week, a little bit of pressure today, a little stress might be actually positive for Ohio State heading into that game. So I think I was going to bring it. I think the crowd's going to bring it. It's an absolutely perfect day. If you're watching this at home on YouTube and you're wondering, should I go down to campus? Yes, you should. It's a beautiful day. Burn will get you in, I promise. Let's sneak you down to the sideline. You can help him take some pictures. Uh, maybe not. Maybe they can't back that part up. But it is an awesome day. Really looking forward to this one. Ohio State and Iowa, 3.30. Kickoff is coming up shortly on CBS. You won't want to miss it. But thank you for not missing this. The pregame keys on the podcast. Full coverage coming your way after the game, as always. We'll have Snap Judgments breaking it down. And we will have the notebook and everything else coming on Sunday. Sound off. Getting ready for Monday and Roosters and everything else. One thing at a time, though. Uh, kickoff is coming soon. Thanks for joining us. He's Burr. I'm Austin. Enjoy the game. See ya.